Well, thank you very much to the OCLAB for the invitation. I'm very excited to give you here a perspective on a little bit more corporate perspective on innovation and maybe a little bit of a focus on external innovation. So I'm very uh, uh, exciting also to take part later on in Q&A sessions. Maybe we find out some uh, similarities and, and, and the common challenges we face. So very excited to talk about that. So first of all, some words about me. I'm Cyril. I'm working at Swisscom for now one and a half years. Before that, I was uh, working uh, in the US for a while, um, helping Swiss companies, um, like finding ground in California. So I had a very business development role and was working in a startup before as well. Um, yeah, and my hobbies is uh, flying drones uh, for a while now and uh, love taking pictures and traveling around the world. So uh, yeah, that gets me excited. So today I would like to sh um, present you what we do at Swisscom. I divided uh, I like in, in four, four parts. So uh, first of all, it's who are we? And then what we do, basically how we do it. I think that's kind of the most important part. And in the end, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to give you a quick uh, deep dive into one of the projects. And we're working on. So uh, you, you might not know Swisscom, but uh, we love this film because it uh, kind of reflects our values a bit. So I'm showing you a quick film here. If we can achieve so much on our own, then how much more can we achieve together? With the assurance that 18,000 people will get behind you every day and everywhere. For the strength to follow our dreams. For courage to conquer new digital worlds. More time to spend at home. To work together with the whole world. To finally call your dream women. To establish your own startup, or to simply switch off for a while. We need courage for everything that's really important to us, and we can achieve a heck of a lot if we dare to believe. Whatever you want from the future, we'll support your dreams, and we believe that almost anything is possible when we do it together. So we, uh, we, we really see us as a neighbor in the connected world of Switzerland. Um, but today I'm going to talk about the Pirate Shop, so not about the Swisscom brand anymore. Um, it's uh, our startup pay at Swisscom. Um, to give you a little bit of a uh, structure, like how are we positioned within this 18,000 people strong enterprise? Um, we are here in the middle of the Pirate. Uh, we do like a lot of exploration, start venturing stuff. We have people in uh, Berlin, um, China and uh, California as well. We have a very specific fintech focused um, co-creation team and another team that basically look, uh, is looking into all deep, all other like uh, verticals and industries. So we are, we are roughly 40 people in the Pirate Shop and our uh, business unit um, head is reporting directly to the CEO of Swisscom. So that's how we are uh, aligned in, in the organization. So maybe you have seen it in the movie before. We, we are much more than a like SIM card provider. Uh, so we need, you know we, need, we own fast in Italy. Uh, we are very active in the in the whole entertainment industry with Swisscom TV, Teleclub, um, uh, like in the evening sports, data sports. I just wanted to give you some some perspective that we have many companies in our company ecosystem already. Since the beginning of the Pirate Shop, which is basically two to three, uh, two and two to three years old, uh, we have been founding uh, like spin, spin out companies. One of that is Mila, uh, kind of a like crowd customer service, uh, which is uh, today called Swisscom Friends. And uh, like last year, we, we founded Swisscom Blockchain company that is basically doing ICO advisory, which was very uh, interesting for all our bank customers. We have over 40 banks as customers, so built an agile startup there that um, helped 
worldwide enterprises to do ICOs and, and blockchain-based services. And recently in AdUnit, which is an advertising company, uh, so they're an actual startup now working at our Pirate Top, 15 people and hiring sales at the moment and really pushing the product out into the market. So this is like a, a, an overview of what we, how we are uh, positioned within SwissCon. So um, as a Pirate Top, you know, we, we see us uh, kind of a speedboat um, and we have the big tanker, which is uh, SwissCon. Uh, so we try to you know, be fast and agile and, and, and take fast decisions in order to you know, maybe bring that big tanker to, the, to another course, slowly but uh, steadily. So uh, we really believe that co-creation is a key, um, key competence in doing that and doing innovation like this. So in another perspective, we see Swisscom and we see the whole startup ecosystem. So as I said, we're really looking out, we, we look into external innovation a lot. So although we have a lot of um, inside, like uh, teams inside Swisscom that do R&D, simple like classic R&D and, 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 and software development, but we are more working on the external innovation, so looking into startups, um, evaluating them, and if we like them, and they like us, we kind of go into a collaboration and do something that is bigger than just the sum of the, of the parts, right? So, nicely said. Um, this is happening in the Pirates of, this is uh, kind of our oyster lab, if you want. <laughs> so, uh, um, yeah, you know, as uh, we are also hosting events here, uh, we have an internal community event that we, that we do. I think that's key for a satellite company that does innovation. The worst thing that could happen to you is that you get lost from and, and you get forgotten by the enterprise. One thing is that you want to be agile and independent, but you shouldn't forget the enterprise because those are actually the guys who could be your implementing customers if you want to say, if you want to bring them a startup or a project they, they should implement. If they don't know you, if they don't like what you do, uh, you, you can implement, right? So you have to have everything in, uh, kind of involved in this whole process. Uh, yeah, and we, we incubate kind of our, um, uh, our ideas there as well. So I'm now going to dive deeper into what we do. So we have basically three uh, value propositions, which is one is the connection of Swisscom with the startup ecosystem. Um, we want to be a driver for uh, innovation, so we see us as a form of transformation of Swisscom, of whole Swisscom. And third, um, and I think uh, most importantly, uh, we, do, we do real stuff as well, so we really believe in cooperation as well with startups. And I think the biggest impact happens when you have all those three together and you can make use of all those assets that you have established and you can bring them together to make something really cool. So I'm going to start uh, giving you a quick quick overview what we do in the uh, connection. So as I said, we have, uh, out, well, we have uh, teams in, uh, in Berlin, Shanghai and Silicon Valley. We have been in Silicon Valley for over 20 years. So we have a Swisscom office there that um, are looking constantly into startups, filling our deal flow where we, you know, where our venturing guys looking into the startups and uh, as well our cooperation people and kind of assess if it makes sense to get in touch with a certain company and to test what's on the table. And we also have the opportunity to bring our people to those uh, to those outposts and get them connected with the roads there. The idea behind because we do that is we, we simply you know believe and you for instance looking at Shanghai that the stuff that is happening there is really is really cool and far ahead of, of uh, in certain industries of what we're doing here in Switzerland. So by knowing this already now and and kind of uh, you know thinking in, in that world, uh, we are getting more ready to the future. But when we talk about the Swiss ecosystem, on the other hand, we're looking at for sure all the, the interesting ICT startups. We have a certain ICT focus. Um, we have collaborations with the ETH Zurich and the EPFL. So, for instance, at the EPFL in Lausanne, we, uh, we sponsor a Swiss digital lab there where we can uh, be um, kind of a sponsor of certain master's thesis or research projects. So, to really really dive into the, the technology and, and drive what, what people are uh, like, uh, looking into their stuff. On the other hand, you know, when, you, when you look for startups, there are num numerous organizations in Switzerland that, um, that provide 
those kind of networks. For instance, Kickstarter Accelerator, where many uh, corporate uh, companies in Switzerland are, are a part of. And every year, you know, they're doing a kind of pilot project programs where every every corporate kind of kind of makes their bets. And at the end, you get a revision and you test, and all everything is uh, is happening there with startups as well. So that's kind of our ecosystem that helps us. Um, you know, understanding what's going on. And this is the Kickstarter accelerator, so just have to talk about that. As well, you know, in, in autumn, coming up again, Hack Zurich, one of the, um, the largest hackathon um, um, in, in Europe, I think. Um, so we're, we're putting hack cases in there as well from our side, uh, like either internally or hack cases that we, that we get from a startup collaboration. Um, to get to get new insights, to test hypotheses, or or to even get like some solutions already. Um, like, and uh, this is another example of of, uh, of a partnership we do with uh, Impact Talk in Zurich. So, like, our employees have kind of day passes available where they can just go out of the of the office and, and work in a in, in a in the Impact Talk uh, office space uh, for free. So this really is an example for kind of the enterprise employees, so to say, right? So because getting them out of the building, getting them out of the everyday, uh, very structured day, and, and, and let them discover this very exciting world that we are maybe already in, right? So um, this is the connection. So how we how we transform? So before before the pirate shop has been that, as you have seen on the pictures before. Well, it looked like this in a very corporate building, and a week later it became this. <laughs> so we, we moved out all the old tables, and uh, you know, like the, the facility manager was very mad at us, and uh, we had it escalated very badly. But uh, it stayed like this, so that's fine. So sometimes you just have to do it and uh, say sorry later, and uh, well, but then you have it, right? So uh, it's nice. Um, it's also learning in the, in the corporate um, pirate shop. When we're talking about certain programs, um, we and this was actually as kind of a startup or bottom-up initiative itself because uh, a colleague of mine he started the um, the Kickbox initiative at Swisscom, which is basically enabling employees doing their own innovation projects. And this is very, I think, very interesting for you because in in that Kickbox you basically. Um, you basically have all the tools available that you need from a lean canvas, education, how to test hypothesis, and you know, to in, in, in order to keep those projects small and lean, especially lean, uh, you get 1,000 uh, franc budget for your first stage, and after three months uh, you pitch, and and uh, and if you have if you are able to prove your your goals and your KPIs, then you basically go into the second stage, which is a blue box. In blue box, you receive kind of one ten thousand uh, francs of, of a budget, which you can spend without asking us again. Uh, you're free to spend it, but the goal is clearly to find paying customers there or one paying customer. And uh, and and, and uh, the third stage is basically scale, which is well, this is not something that can be standardized because it's very individual. But uh, so we have uh, so far we have uh, four gold boxes, we call them. And there, it's really the goal to you know to kind of uh, you know prepare maybe even a spin-off spin, spin company. And this is not only our kind of pirate hop innovation process, but it's also the process that we enable everyone at Swisscom to 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 take it and become the entrepreneur. Because we don't want to teach how to innovate; we want to enable them, and they can really work on their own uh, ideas and, and future. If you want to say that. So, um, so now I'm going to dive into cooperation. Um, so as you, as I said, startups uh, are very important in our ecosystem. For the Swiss startup ecosystem, we we run the Swisscom Startup Challenge every year, and we select the five you know best startups in the ICT domain, and uh, we offer them a one week um, business acceleration trip in Silicon Valley, where we bring them together with kind of our venturing network there. Um, and uh, you know we, we accompany them with uh, with some of our people as well. I was there last uh, last year, and the goal is really you know to kind of it's 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 another way of having a deep a deep due diligence because you are with the entrepreneur trying to kind of to a seven you know seven twenty four for a week. 
you really know them after that, uh, you know how they think, you really know how they are, and you can really envision how it could be to work with them on a very close basis. This is really our kind of our aim uh, after that week. So, and, and, and what we do as well, you know, the, this is just one thing, this is finding the startups, but how do you find the connecting dots inside the company? Because, um, you know, in the end it has to be something that complements what we already do, right? Um, so we, we, we run uh, like jury sessions, uh, as you do like in every other uh, challenge, and we bring the kind of the key decision makers of every other department uh, together and they can really make quick decisions at, at the spot. And those are also the people that you know, we think are kind of, you know, they love startups, they have a very uh, high expertise in their domain, and you know, they just, you know, the, the culture fits also. So this is very important to have uh, like a successful program like this, we're doing this for the sixth edition now. Applications, by the way, open until mid of May, so if you're a startup, uh, uh, just come to me later. Um, another example is, I call it an example of a um, top management thinks robotics are a funny decision. <laughs> uh, to be very honest, so you know, our uh, CEO was once uh, traveling around and I think, uh, you know, Pepper, you might know the Pepper robot is something that, you know, gets, is, is liked very easily. So people like it, it's, it's nice and cool to, to play with. And this is something, you know, we, 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 got, uh, we got basically a project out of, which is basically, hey, here you have a robot, uh, do something with it, what can we do with it? This was the, the question. And so now we are working on that, and what we did was in a hackathon, um, together with the ETH Zurich, uh, where students uh, have been hacking on, on the whole software of the, of, the, of the Pepper, and kind of exploring what is possible, and what kind of use cases are behind. And, 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 and then with, with those outcomes, we were able to actually test each use case um, with, with customers. And now we test the Pepper in, in, in our own shops, and our, uh, our own retail stores, uh, roughly 200, I think, in Switzerland. Um, so, you know, we, we, this is also a, a way of, <laughs> of kind of uh, finding an agile solution in the end, right? So sometimes you have to, you have to go two steps back uh, and, and then start being agile again. But this is something how, how enterprises or bigger corporates work. Right? So, so like some learnings uh, so far from the pirate shop. Um, how we do it? So I think baby like really this is from a very enterprise perspective. So I think baby steps are very important. So you, you might have this one big vision, but uh, especially in, the, in, the, in in every large corporate that has certain processes and which leads to slow decision making, you have to make baby steps like little little projects that doesn't really uh, bound too much resources uh, on the financial side, but also on the people side, and then you're then you're able to really bring this whole thing forward. But this is actually the same thing as you, you know, you would do in an agile way anyway, so right, this is uh, true, but you have to kind of synchronize the whole approach with a more slower environment. So um, that's what I'm talking about. Um, and for sure, for sure adapt um, when you, when you are with a startup. Um, I mean, the startup is, you know, an external company. You, you might start discussions or, or collaboration. You're pretty, you're pretty dependent from the startup too. Not only they are in, very dependent from us because they could change every day. The, the current project I'm doing, you know, they, you know, every week we have big news that, that comes out, and we have to adapt as well. So this is very exciting, but sometimes very challenging from a um, from a large corporate. You know, doing startup collaborations is, is, nothing, is not something easy. The, the main thing is that we're talking there about eye height, so talking the same language as a startup. Um, the thing is sometimes there is a big elephant in the room that sort of thinks, hey, you are a big corporate, um, you, can do, you should do everything for me as a startup. The other way around, you know, there are also like expectations, so at the very beginning it's important to, to kind of form a team I would say ideally you, as a corporate worker, you kind of think yourself as being kind of a team member of the startup. That's actually my ideal way of, of, of finding a, uh, a good working team. Good working. As well as transparency, so expectation management is really something that is 
really important when you, I mean, you, you, you know, I mean, I've heard stories from other corporates and also from in, in our corporate as well, you know, when you say, yeah, we need, we need some time to, to, to think about this decision and, you know, you postpone it every time after six months, oh, sorry, you know, it's uh, the project died, I think, I mean, you're gonna kill the startup, right? This is something that could really happen and this is the real thing that could happen. So that's why baby steps make, make expectations really manageable and also risk manageable, right? So this is really something important. And this is more on a methodological, methodological side, but um, um, startup collaborations can have many forms, right? Um, I mean, when we have a cooperation where we basically put together assets that we have, so let's say I, I take the example of uh, Mila, the, the crowd uh, customer care, which is basically, that was basically the idea of, you know, enabling neighbors to help other neighbors by, let's say, a TV problem or something like this, or you have a problem with your Wi-Fi in your marketplace. And they brought that together with our customer uh, field force, which is huge, right? So those were two assets that we tried to bring together. What were the positive advantages of each each asset, and how and, 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 and how does this look like when you, when you put this together? So this is kind of the the, the starting point of, of every co-creation um, project. But in the end, what what comes out at the end could be that we could be become a customer of the startup. Uh, we could resell a solution that the startup together with us has built um, or you know some other forms like investing in startup and this is this is all possible on, on, on a more project side you know this this is just to show that this this is the heck Zurich um, when you do such partnerships in the ecosystem that I have shown shown you before you have certain assets at hand we like the heck Zurich or something else, or in, in the impact hub, they offer then they offer co like a, um, like a brainstorming sessions with uh, they, they do all the moderation stuff like that. Those are those are the, the the ingredients that are on the table that you have to simply use when you have those partnerships and use it at the right time uh, to get the right insights. So. Um, enough said how we do stuff. This is a, a little uh, demo uh, of, of a project that I'm working on at the moment. So I'm jumping back to the last year's startup challenge. Um, I'm doing now a project with those three guys, which represent a startup called Involi in Western Switzerland. So they're situated in uh, north of Lausanne. Um, so what they do is the problem today when you're thinking about the drone industry is that uh, drones are blind. Um, you might think that drones are, have already sensors on it, like if you, one of, one of you, the, those of you who have a DJI drone, they have certain sensors who, you know, who uh, kind of um, blocks the drone from flying into the wall. But the problem is more like this. Uh, how do you, how do you see, how does the, do drones see other aircrafts? And we're talking about manned aircrafts. Because in, because in a world where um, drones are autonomous, which will hopefully happen soon, but also today where you fly your own drone, you just don't see other airplanes. You hardly see your own drone. I mean, since I have my own drone, I mean, if you look up, it's flying 120 meters, it's hard to see it. And this is a huge, huge security risk. And worldwide, there has been um, incidents where drones, you know, crash with airplanes. Uh, we had over Lake of Zurich a drone crash nearly into a Regal helicopter two years ago, I think, or one year ago. So this is really something bad. And on the other side, you have weather issues. Um, today, we, today there are like regular drone missions uh, done by the Swiss Post in Lugano between a uh, laboratory and a hospital. Every day, I think, ten flights a day. They are autonomous. They ask authorization for, which is a big hurdle still. Uh, but the big, big issue there is always weather, right? I mean, if, if it's uh, if it's very cold and snowing, you know, all the the rotors and so they get, you know, they get uh, they get different in terms of uh, of moving around in the air, and this has a negative impact on the whole mission. Now that's kind of the problem the, that startup um, tries to solve. So what we did is. Um, we, we kind of saw that that problem seems to have some traction in the market. So 
what we did is uh, we have chosen seven antenna locations in Western Switzerland and put on that receiver of the startup because what they do is they, they, they simply they do a receiver that tracks all the, the signals from the manned aircraft. As you would see, let's say, on the um, flight with R24M, for instance. But the problem there is always that you, you don't have that dense network of, of antennas, right? Because it's a crowd-funded, a crowd-based solution and you don't have an, an 100% coverage. But those are the two engineers from, from our company uh, mounting that sensor on it. And simply by doing that, we learned a lot how how like what are the cost implications of in installing such a device there? What are the what are the hurdles? What are the problems as well? And and how can we make this whole process faster? Because on the one side there is the problem and solution fit of the of the product itself, but this is kind of a part of a if you want to call it a go-to-market uh, thing because we really think that auto telcos should that have as well, right? So. This is what it gives us. Uh, it's it's a 3D model of uh, Switzerland uh, showing uh, the airplanes uh, live, and this is really something unique. So the the experts we have talking with the potential customers, uh, they really like that. They have never seen that before, and I think really one of the key is that you have all this information in one place. Um, yeah. So and talking about like you know being part of the startup so uh, two weeks ago we were at the conference uh, and you know I wasn't the Swisscom guy there I was like in Bowie. I was just one of the team so I kind of was uh, on the cover there a bit uh, and I really felt like part of the team as well and this is really something they tell us every day that they like when uh, people take you seriously and really believe in your solution or your problem that you want to solve in another words and this is really that you know you know, it's, it's, it gets me up every day because I love seeing or working with those people because they are, they are a startup, they, they love to, they would like to change the world and this, this is so energizing uh, to be part of that as well. So, oops, yeah. Um, yeah, this is kind of one of the first results. So uh, it's basically the landing page where we show the, uh, where we show a sneak peek of the traffic and we track uh, the sign up rates, but we are like, a, uh, it's, it's, it's just happened, so we haven't run uh, that much traffic through the site, so we weren't able to, uh, I don't know the, the KPIs until, until now, so. Yeah, it was the Pirate Sub, so um, yeah, we really believe in startups, in, in cooperation, and uh, yeah, I'm happy to answer your questions later on, I guess. Thank you very much.